Welcome to another Rannosaurus. It's been a long time coming, but uh, it's been a lot of crap that's been going on in the internet. <laughs> so I thought I'd make a new Rannosaurus, talk about some stuff, and share my feelings on what's been going on. Uh, as you can see, I have this huge beard now. It is fall and it's getting colder, but I'm pretty much not shaving my beard till I get down to 300 pounds. This is my push right here because this beard drives me fucking crazy. So I'm going to let it grow until I get down to 300 pounds. And don't make no jokes about how my beard's going to be all the way down to here because that's how long it's going to take me to lose uh, the weight to get to 300 pounds. I know you got to joke about that in the comments, but don't joke. I'm not going to have a fucking ZZ Top beard by the time I get to 300 pounds. I ain't got to take that long. Anyway, um, there's a lot of shit going on. Uh, but I figure the most important thing to be discussed right now is um, Gamers Gate. So, where, where do I begin? Uh, when Gamers Gate first started, I didn't know what the fuck it was. Let, let's, let's be honest. Let's be real. I started seeing this hashtag, and then people started sharing links. And I saw this long blog post from this guy named Aaron Joni or Aaron Gajoni, whatever the fuck his name is. This guy was dating Zoe Quinn. Zoe Quinn is an independent game developer. She makes this game called Depression Quest. Fell madly in love with this girl. He just explained this whole story on his Tumblr about how he fell in love with this girl. And then he found out that she was cheating on him with her boss and then with the writer from Kotaku and one other guy. And I'm not going to get into all the details about her and how she's totally against infidelity and all this stuff. But anyway, she cheated on him. He got pissed and he exposed this woman in this huge write-up on this blog. Not only did he expose this woman on this blog, he also called out the people that she, the other people that she was fucking. So she called out this guy from Kotaku, I forget his name, and I don't really give a shit, but there's a writer from Kotaku that was fucking her. Uh, he called out the develop the other developer's name, her boss, that she was fucking. Now here's my here's my whole take on this. This whole thing is the catalyst that started Gamersgate. Or Gamergate. And the way I feel is number one, yeah, Zoe's a cheating bitch. Okay? She's a cheating bitch. She's obviously no good. So why don't you just dump the girl and keep it moving, as John Shaw would say. Kick her to the curb and keep it moving. That wasn't enough for this guy. So he had to make this huge blog post on the internet exposing her for the cheating bitch that she is. But at the same time, he also exposed other people that she was sleeping with. Now, while I don't agree with her cheating, but I don't know her. She didn't cheat on me, so I don't really give a fuck. People are going to cheat. That's just what happens. Human beings cheat. It's not my problem. It's obviously his problem, but he didn't know how to deal with it, so he made this long blog post exposing everybody. So, this girly man, Aaron Joni, or whatever the fuck his name is, this wuss of a man couldn't handle the fact that she cheated on him, so he exposed her on the internet. Okay, whatever. The problem I have with this is that he called out other names. He didn't mind his own business. Yeah, she fucked around on him, but to bring other people's names into this blog post and to basically tell the world that they were fucking Zoe Quinn, I, th I feel that that's wrong. That wasn't his business. Was it his business to expose her? Yes, but to bring other people into this exposure was wrong. It shows that the guy is mentally unstable. Okay? I understand. He's pissed off and he wants to be vindictive. He wants to get her back or whatever. So he exposes her on the internet. I get it. I understand. But it was totally unnecessary. Kick her to the curb. Change your number. Keep it moving. Find somebody else that you can trust. But to bring in names of other people, to tell the world other people who she was sleeping with, that's not your fucking business to do. So I totally disagree with that that whole part of this exposure thing. 
It's like, what if I was fucking Zoe Quinn? You know, what if she was cheating on him with me? You know, what if I got a piece of Zoe Quinn and he knew about it? So then he'd put my name up there on the blog, and I just don't feel that's right that he brings these other people into his little vindictive tirade. So he's a wimp, he's a wuss, he didn't know how to deal with it. Any other man would have kicked her to the curb and moved on. Anyway, so because she was fucking the Kotaku writer, people were like, wait a minute, this developer is fucking this Kotaku writer, and he's probably giving her games a good write-up. So it started this whole mess of bullshit, <clears throat> and they used a hashtag called Gamersgate. Gamersgate is supposed to be the side of the... The gamer side, people who trust sites like Kotaku, who want a, an unbiased uh, opinion on games, and they found out that one of the writers was sleeping with a developer. So they assumed that, A, if the, if the person from Kotaku was going to write about this game, he was going to say nothing, about, nothing but good about it, which is wrong, because it's basically pussy for good press. Okay, so people were pissed off about that. I mean, you, you trust these writers at these websites, right? You trust these journalists, and you want an unbiased opinion. You want some integrity. But when you have a journalist sleeping with a developer, you know that journalist is going to do nothing to give that developer a good write-up. The way I look at it is, who gives a fuck? I really don't care if a developer is sleeping with a journalist. Because I choose my games based on my opinion and my experience with those games. I don't need anybody else to help me decide what games I want. But a lot of gamers out there put way too much faith and way too much trust into these fucking journalists. That's, that's part of the problem right there. So they put all this faith into these writers, and now they're pissed off because the writer's getting some pussy for some free press on a game. So this whole Gamersgate thing starts, and it gets all out of whack. And all these people start jumping into this hashtag, and the people that are on the internet that we all hate, I call them ignorant racist assholes. So ignorant racist assholes, these are the same guys that get in the YouTube comments, they call black people niggers, you know, they call women cunts, they make death threats, they say, I'm going to rape you, I'm going to kill you. These are the guys that we're constantly banning in forums on websites. They're out there on the internet, they're always causing trouble. Okay, so these guys jump on this whole Zoe Quinn stuff and they start sending her death threats and, and saying all this shit and calling her names. And then you have the, the real gamers out there who are upset about this whole deal with Zoe Quinn and they start exposing all this bullshit that's going on in the industry that we were talking about years ago. I was talking about it, hip hop was talking about it, other independent sites were talking about the industry and how fucked up it is and all the shit that's going on with the press and the publishers or whatever. So all of a sudden, all this stuff is starting to come out. All these things are starting to be leaked because of this Gamersgate thing. And everybody's tagging these posts, pound Gamergate or hashtag Gamergate, right? So I'm like, okay, where was all this exposure last generation? Where was all this exposure four to five years ago when we were talking about this shit? All of this happened because a developer was fucking a journalist. And I don't think anybody should care about that, but again, this is my opinion. I'm like, who gives a fuck if they were having sex? Whatever. Okay, so it's getting out of hand. You got the IRA, the ignorant racist assholes, doing the death threats, doing the bullshit, and then you got the gamers exposing all this stuff, finding all this stuff on the internet. They're exposing journalists. They're, they're finding things, posting pictures of tweets. They're actually concerned and they want to change. The ignorant racist assholes are now using the Gamergate hashtag. So they're using it because they're against this too, but they just want to hate. So they're jumping on that hashtag too. So then you got people like Zoe Quinn, Anita Sarkeesian, uh, Leah, Leah, I think it's Leah Alexander or Leah Alexander. They're all, they're looking at this and they're like, okay, all the Gamersgate people are ignorant racist assholes. They're all a bunch of trolls and misogynists. You know, the misogyny word, they throw that around like it's fucking oxygen. So now they're painting the whole Gamersgate crowd 
as ignorant racist assholes. All of them. But the real gamers in Gamersgate, the, the people who are really concerned about what's going on in the industry, are men, women, black, white, Asian, Hispanic. It's the whole gamut. The problem is the ignorant racist assholes are also waving the Gamergate flag. Okay, It gets deeper than that. It gets completely deeper than that. So Leia Alexander writes this editorial on Game of Sutra. And in the editorial, she talks about uh, gamers are dead, or gaming is dead. Um, and she says that, let me find it here. I had it here a minute. She, she talks all this shit about these gamers. And basically that they're trolls, and it's not a culture. How can you call it a culture? They're just a bunch of immature kids, and they're afraid they're going to get their toys taken away, and all this other stuff. Which upsets the gamers gate people even more. But it also upsets the ignorant racist assholes who are waving the Gamers Gate flag. So you have more of this death threats and, and ignorant vitriol going on, on the internet and all this other bullshit from the IRA people. And then you have the Gamers Gate people, you know, doing their best to make change. So they somehow get intel to pull their advertising from Game of Sutra because of the story. Now the story was posted late August, I think it was August 28th, and everybody was talking about it when it was posted. A month later, Intel pulls their ad. Now, these ads are really huge. I'm sure Intel paid that site thirty to $40,000 for that ad. But when you pay somebody, when you pay a site for advertising, they also have to get so many page views to get paid. So if they pull the ad, that money stops flowing, and that support stops flowing, and Intel probably will never support them again. So, while all this is going on, I'm like, what the fuck is Gamergate? And I start reading, and I start researching what it's about, and I didn't want to have anything to do with it at first, because I heard of all the ignorant racist assholes and the shit that they were doing. I don't want to be a part of anything, any group of people that's uh, threatening people with death, uh, with death, or calling people racist names, or... Uh, treating women badly or anything. I don't want to be associated with that. But then I started to see the good side of Gamergate. And I started to see all the things that they were doing and all the change that they actually were making. It's fucking amazing what all these people were doing. However, there's a lot of bullshit going on in Gamergate too. There's a lot of bullshit. And I'm like, if this shit has been going on this long, once again, where were you guys last generation when we were talking about it? We were talking about on a war zone. We've been talking about this shit for years, about how certain members of the press get preferential treatment from publishers because they want scores. They want good scores for their games, about how publishers are in collusion with Metacritic and they won't support sites that aren't on Metacritic because they want sites that are going to be able to put scores on Metacritic and help their games sell more. Because there's too many gamers out there that don't have their own opinion and they need a good score before they can buy a game. Higher scores mean more game sales. It's been proven. It's fucking ridiculous, but it's the truth. So let's get back to let's get back to this whole thing. So Leia, Leia Alexander, she she did all these tweets and everything. She's saying all this stuff. And now there's this like campaign against Leia Alexander. And she mentioned something about how uh, Hood men are always catcalling her or whatever. And people took that and they ran with it. And I even scratched my head about it. But when I heard it, I'm like, hood men. She's probably like, she's probably talking about people in the hood, right? So people are like, oh, Leigh Alexander's racist because when she says hood men, she's talking about blacks. And then uh, I'm like, well, I don't really think Leigh is a racist person because... I knew, I knew of her name before I met her, and I haven't really officially met her. I mean, I met her, but I didn't know who she was when I met her. I met Leigh Alexander at Call of Duty XP. We were at the Kanye West concert. It was me and Hip Hop Gamer, and there was this woman that was hanging with us. She was just there. She just, like, appeared out of nowhere. I'm like, who the fuck is this girl? You know? I thought she was attractive, and... She's hanging out with Hip Hop Gamer. I figured somebody he, somebody he knew, but I had never seen her before. 
And so I didn't know who she was, but she hung with us for a while. We took some pictures, and he introduced me to her. But even when he introduced me to her, it didn't click. <laughs> but then I was like, oh, shit, that's Leigh Alexander. But she was pretty cool. I mean, she was really cool, really nice. You know, I don't see any problems with her. But I read her opinion piece about gamers and about the culture. I completely understand where she's coming from. I completely understand where she's coming from. The things that I, I gotta find this fucking article. Where is it? I got I gotta get some quotes from it. Um, uh, so much shit going on. Here it is. Okay, so she says things like I'm just gonna read some quotes from her article so you understand. the The title: Gamers don't have to be your audience. Gamers are over. Now, keep in mind that Leigh Alexander is a gamer and a journalist. She writes for several sites, but she also plays games too. And she was a Call of Duty XP. Keep that in mind. Um, some of the things she said, uh, I'm just going to read from it. I often say I'm a video game culture writer, but lately I don't know exactly what that means. Game culture as we know it is kind of embarrassing. It's not even culture. It's buying things spackling over memes and in jokes repeatedly and it's getting mad at the internet and this everything she said is true however it's not true for all of us that first paragraph the people she's talking about are the ignorant racist assholes i know who she's talking about because i've dealt with these people before that's who she's she's not talking about me she's not talking about my fan base my fan base doesn't act like that. I mean, we have our jokes and stuff like that. But people in my fan base are going to call people and make death threats, you know, or call people racist names or treat women bad. That's not my fan base. That's not hip-hop's fan base. But I know who she's talking about because that first paragraph sums up some of the people we see on N4G, sums up some of the people we see on 4chan, sums up some of the people we see on NeoGAF. These people do exist. That's who she's talking about. She said, it's young men queuing with plush mushroom hats and backpats and jutting pro promo poster rolls, queuing passionately for hours at events around the world to see the things that marketers want them to see, to find out whether they should buy things or not. They don't know how to dress or behave. Television cameras pan across these list listless uh, queues and often catch the expressions of people who don't quite know what they themselves are standing there. Or don't quite know why they themselves are standing there. Now, I don't completely agree with that because that paragraph sums up the nerd culture, whether it's standing in line for a game, standing in line to see a comic book writer or uh, an actor or actress from a movie. That is geek culture right there. So I can't agree with what she's saying in that paragraph, especially when she says they don't know how to dress. Uh, so I don't agree with that. I, I'm, not, I'm not agree with everything she says here. That second paragraph probably pissed off a lot of people because that's us. That's our culture. That's what we do. We stand in lines to go see shit, to get stuff. This is what we do. This is a geek culture. So I thought that second paragraph was totally unnecessary. She wrote, Games culture is a petri dish of people who know so little about how human social interaction and professional life works that they can connect Oh, concoct online wars about social justice or game journalism ethics, straight face, and cause genuine human consequence because of video games. True. Again, that's the ignorant racist asshole she's talking about. Lately, I often find myself wondering what I'm even doing here, and I know I'm not alone. I've wondered that too. Because I don't want to be associated with these people who are doing these negative things on the internet. So, I mean, it goes on. She says a lot of stuff that I actually agree with. Um, traditional gaming is sloughing off culturally and economically like a carapace of a bug. Gamer isn't just a data demographic label that most people increasingly prefer not to use. Gamers are over. That's why they're so mad. I don't agree with that. Again, she's, there's too much generalization going on here. Because you have the people like me and you have these 12-year-old assholes who have access to the internet. The same people you hear on Xbox Live and PSN yelling nigger, nigger, nigger. 
in the fucking chat when they when they get killed or something throughout the whole fucking match. The same people that were reporting to Microsoft and Sony, the same people we have to mute. This is the people she's talking about. The people who said, "Wow, I can be anonymous on the internet. That means I have a license to be a fucking asshole and nobody can do anything about it." That's who she's talking about. She's not talking about me. She's not talking about hip hop. You know, she's not talking about Ghostini, Social Gamer, Freddy. She's not talking about these people. She's talking about these ignorant, racist assholes. But she didn't make that clear enough in this article. So gamers like me, they were offended when they read it. So now there's this whole smear campaign against Leia Alexander. Now, I would love for her to tweet me and correct me if I'm wrong. But this is how I see it. This is when I read her article, this is how I saw it. There were some things I didn't agree with, but I agree with a lot of what she said because I witnessed this. I had one I had a couple people there was a couple people that called themselves fans of the bit bag and shut the fuck up and play that I had to ban because of, of that attitude. I had to ban them because they were ignorant assholes. They were there to troll and be nasty and do what they wanted to do, to do because they were on the internet. And I guarantee you 99.9% .9 of these ignorant racist assholes, if they were in front of me or in front of anybody, they wouldn't act that way because they'd probably get their ass kicked. They have this fake license to do what they want on the internet. And they do it. Let's get back to Anita Sarkeesian. A lot of people hate Anita Sarkeesian because they feel that her biased agenda towards video games and men is somehow going to change the industry and fuck everything up for us. Now, here's what I think about Anita. I've watched her videos, and she makes good points in her videos. The problem is she only looks at one side. She doesn't look at both sides. And some may say, well, it's tropes against women, Torrance. It's not tropes against humans. Well, women and men are both humans. So if she's going to talk about one side of the coin, she might as well flip it over and talk about the other side. Because men are just as sexualized in games as women. Okay? There's violence against men in games, just like there is against women. But again, she only talks about the female point of view. And the majority of the gamers that are pissed off at her of course, are males, and the ones doing all the death threats and the bullshit and hacking her website, calling her a cunt, those are the 12-year-old ignorant racist assholes. And they might not even be 12-year-olds, they might be grown men, but I'm going to call them 12-year-olds for the sake of the discussion. Now, Anita, Anita made, what, $156,000 on her Kickstarter campaign, and it took her two years to release all the videos, which was hilarious. But I'm going to tell you something. She raised $156,000. I don't care if, if I don't agree with her agenda or I don't like her. I'm sorry, but I can't hate the hustle. I just can't hate on that hustle. Anybody out there, anybody who plays games that has to work a 9-to-5 job would love to get $156,000 to make some videos that you were going to make anyway for free. Am I right or am I right? So don't hate, don't hate her hustle, okay? I don't care if you think she's lying or you think she's deceitful, whatever. She did it, and she earned 156,000 fucking dollars. Now, it probably took her two years to make those videos because she took a trip to the Bahamas with that money. Whatever. I don't like her agenda. I don't like how it's presented. But I will agree that some of the points she makes are actual factual are actually factual. The problem is that she doesn't really do a good job in researching the games and that her agenda is heavily one-sided. And because it's heavily one-sided, a lot of people, a lot of men specifically, just aren't going to agree with her. And I say this, as I'm a black man who loves games and I make films and I'm starting to make games, if you don't like something that you see in an industry, don't wait for somebody else to change it for you. Do it yourself. I'm a black man. 
If I didn't like the way black characters were portrayed in games or the fact that there weren't enough black people in games, guess what? I should start making my own games and getting it done. So, Anita, if you don't like the way women are portrayed in games, take some of that money of yours and make a fucking game. Make a game where women are portrayed the way you want to do it. You have to make the change. You can't expect these white male developers to do that for you. And seriously, video games are a fantasy world anyway. <clears throat> Let's be honest. I don't really care if they change it or not. I don't really care. Because not once in any of her videos did she mention the hundreds of thousands of men that are killed in video games. Call of Duty. Single player campaign. Hundreds of thousands of men are killed. God of War. Hundreds of thousands of men are killed throughout the campaign. Battlefield. Uh, I mean, there's, there's hundreds of games you can name. There's not a lot of women killed in video games. It's mostly men. The only time you see women getting killed in video games is when there's zombies and shit. Bayonetta. Female character. Kills hundreds of thousands of men in her games. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, let's put both sides on, on the scale here, Anita. And if you're not going to do it, nobody's going to take you seriously. And that's all I'm going to say about that. You know, I don't hate your hustle. Don't hate it. More power to you. But I'm sorry, your videos are, are very lackluster. And a lot of people can't handle it. A lot of people don't know how to uh, exchange opinions with you, so they hate, they call you names, they do shit because they're immature, ignorant, racist assholes. But that is not all of Gamersgate. And that is not all male gamers. And that's what these people are failing to see. That's what these fake feminists are failing to see. Because you got real feminists... And you got fake feminists. You know what fake feminists do? They hear an opinion that they don't like, and they automatically label that person misogynist. Does everybody know what that word misogynist means? It means hatred of women. Or prejudice of women. That's what it means. And just because you're having a debate or an argument with a woman online, it does not make you a misogynist. But they throw that word around like it's fucking oxygen. It drives me fucking crazy. It's ridiculous. So anyway, I understand where Leigh Le Alexander's coming from. I understand where Zoe Quinn's coming from. She doesn't deserve all that shit. It's not our business what she does. It's not our job to attack her and get her back because she cheated on this dumbass. I don't feel bad for the guy at all. We didn't have to know who he was. He didn't have to post that Tumblr. He should have called her a few names, cussed her out, and walked away. But no, he had to start a shitstorm. And I don't take, I'm not taking either of their sides, but I think he's a dick for posting the Tumblr and revealing who she was sleeping with, and she's a fucking dick for cheating on him. But I don't really give a fuck. Because that's not my concern. That doesn't affect me. Because I don't need somebody in the business. I don't need their opinion on games. I don't need it. I have my own opinion. And the majority of people in Gamersgate are concerned about the industry. They want it to be fair and balanced. They want it to have integrity. Because they look up to these people for their opinions on games. And I've been saying for years that their fucking opinions don't matter. My opinion doesn't matter. I have fans that respect my opinion. They look for my opinion on games. Technology is one thing, but games are different because game is a story, it's characters, it's music, it's mechanics, things that I like you might not like. I constantly get cracked on about Dark Void. I still love I love Dark Void. I never stopped loving Dark Void. It's a great fucking game. But not everybody liked people. Why the whole Torrance likes this? It must be good. And a lot of them didn't like it, but then again, a lot of them did. You know? 
But my job is, or was, as I was a journalist, my job was to inform my readers. Here, here's what it is. Asura's Wrath has a little bit of Space Harrier, a little bit of God of War, you know, a little bit of Devil May Cry. It's got a little bit of everything. It has an awesome fucking story and awesome characters. But don't take my word for it. Check it out yourself. Check it out yourself. I wish I had. I wish I had an old video game box here, but like. I'm an old school gamer, so you talk about shit that's going on today with Metacritic and, and scoring of games, which I think scoring of games needs to go to fuck away. It needs to go away. It's just fucking stupid. It's just another one of those problems with this industry. But when I was young, Mega Man came out. Let me get, I'm going to get this. Let's see, Mega Man. I want to get these dates right. Mega Man Wikipedia. Okay, Mega Man came out in December 1987. <clears throat> I was 17 years old. My cousin was 22. My cousin had a good job. He bought a lot. He bought a lot more games than I did because he had a much better job than I did. <clears throat> so I would go on ventures with him to buy these games because back in 1987, you would wait for a game to come out. You didn't know when it was coming out. You didn't have release dates. You had no idea. You would randomly go to Toys R Us or Child World to see if anything new came out. There was no internet. The magazines had like a two to three month lead time. So you had no idea when shit was coming out. So we'd go to the store and be like, hmm, Kid Icarus, what's that? Let's get it. Check it out. Trojan? Hmm, that's interesting. Wasn't that at the arcade? So we walk into, um, I think it was KB Toys. I think was, at the time we got this game, I think it was KB Toys. Why in the KB Toys, we saw this picture, this painting of this guy on the front of the box. This white dude with, like, armor on, and the name of the game was Mega Man. Now, all kinds of alarms went off in my head, personally, because the, he looked like a robot. Or a cyborg, and I'm like, a fucking robot game. Because I love robots. And Barry's like, yeah. So you grab you say, Can I see the Mega Man game? And the guy would grab the box and you turn it around to look at the graphics. And be like, okay, this is everything was platformers back then, so it was just another platform, but it, it was different. It was Mega Man. But like, okay, let's get it. So my cousin paid for the game. We go to his house, we pop it in. And we play Mega Man. We're like, oh my god, this is fucking awesome. The soundtrack kicks ass. You get to steal weapons from your enemies. This is fucking incredible. So we play for hours on end until we beat the game. That's all we had back then. There was no fucking scores to be like, oh, oh, they gave it a six. I'm not going to buy it. Or, or they gave it a nine, so I have to buy it. There was none of that shit. It was a fucking gamble every single time you bought a game. And what a lot of you guys don't realize today is it's still a fucking gamble every time you buy a fucking game, regardless of how many videos you got out there, how many fucking review scores, how the demo was. It's a fucking gamble every time you buy a game, and it will continue to be a gamble for the rest of eternity. It's always a gamble. And more than likely, if you like the mechanics of the game, graphics, the story, you're probably going to like the game. It's a fucking gamble. And there isn't a single person out in this fucking industry that can make that purchase even better for you, that can make you feel better about that purchase. Not Kotaku, not Polygon, not IGN. No fucking body can do it. Look at uh, Adam Suster's review of Bioshock Infinite. Now, I have the other Bioshock games, and they're cool, but I was looking at Infinite, I'm like, oh, this looks really interesting and really different, and I got Bioshock Infinite. I do not like the fucking game. It doesn't move me at all. It's not exciting. It's pretty, but I really don't like fucking Bioshock Infinite. So I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck was Sessler talking about? <laughs> you know? But I didn't buy the game based on Sessler's review. I bought it based on what I saw 
the previews, the screenshots. It's another Bioshock game. I love the other one, so it's got to be good, right? It was a gamble. I don't think it sucks, but I really don't like it that much. This is what I'm talking about. But in today's world, you gamers out there, you can't do that. You need these reviews and you need this score and all this shit. You don't need any of that shit. What's this game about? Okay, let me try it. It's a fucking gamble. I don't care how many videos you watch, how many podcasts you hear, how many review scores you see. The only way you'll know if you're going to like that game or not is if you play that $60 gamble and you buy it and check it out yourself. Let me come back around full circle. The reason why Gamers Gate is out there is because these gamers can't trust the fucking press. And they want to be able to trust them because they need their opinion to buy their fucking games. If you didn't care about the press's opinion, if you didn't need them, if you didn't put them on such a high pedestal, you wouldn't give a fuck that Zoe fucked a fucking uh, journalist from, of all places, Kotaku. You wouldn't give a fuck. Who cares? Really? People are going to fuck. Years ago, I knew a guy that used to make strategy guides that hooked up with a PR, a PR person. I said, oh, cool, that's cool. They fell in love. They lived together. You know, I don't think it worked out in the end, but he was it was a journalist dating a PR person. Who gives a flying fuck? You think that changed his opinion on games? I'll tell you what. My girlfriend was a game developer, and she made a game, and I didn't like it. I tell her, I'm like, I really don't like this game. Personally, just me personally, I wouldn't review a game that somebody I knew was making. But I would talk about it. That's just me personally. I don't care what everybody else does. But, but part of this whole problem is that the gaming collective, gamers as a, a huge collective, a huge group, we can't seem to get away of this fucking review scoring system that's out there. This is why they're all pissed off. So I'm happy to say that finally gamers are coming together for something. Finally, it took years. But you gamers have come together and created something huge. And by getting Intel to pull their ads, you have just shown the world how much power you have. So how about let's take this power and put it into something useful. Because I'm sorry, getting Intel to remove their ads and exposing all these journalists, it's not useful to us. We have nothing to gain from this. We haven't gained anything from this. Not a goddamn thing. It started off on Twitter. You can't change things on Twitter. You can get on Twitter and make a hashtag and have a million people talk about it. It's not going to change anything. And it wasn't working. That's why they said, fuck this, let's start contacting advertisers. Now you're making change because Twitter doesn't change shit. So contacting advertisers, yes, that was the right thing to do. Now you're showing the world how much power you have. But fuck Zoe Quinn, fuck Anita Sarkeesian, fuck all this bullshit that you're doing with this Gamersgate thing. Let's do something more productive. How about we take everybody who's involved in Gamersgate and we get publishers to lower the price of games? Wouldn't that be nice? How about we say, hey, Activision, we're not going to buy Call of Duty Advanced Warfare until you lower the price of the game by $5. So Tuesday comes, nobody buys it. Activision can't go online and say, hey, we sold $100 million worth of games because you're not going to sell $100 million worth of games because we're going to sit here and we're going to wait for you to drop the price of the game $5 before we buy it. And you know you have the power to do that. Doesn't everybody want cheaper games? How about Gamersgate get together and say, hey, the price of a game should reflect the content in the game. Case in point, 
If the price of a game reflects the content of a game, then Call of Duty should only be worth about $40. Because what they try to do is make you pay for a season pass or individually buy all those multiplayer packs, which give you additional maps that are already in the game, for $15 a pop. By the time you're done paying for all the fucking Call of Duty shit, you're already $100 in the hole. As much as I love Battlefield, EA does the same shit. The maps are already there. The data is already there from the single player campaign. They just turn it into a multiplayer map and then give it to you for $15 as DLC. It's fucking bullshit. When are you fucking people going to be like, hey, we have power now. Let's really change the industry and stop this DLC bullshit. Let's get the industry to lower the price of games. Let's do something constructive with this power that we have. Instead of worrying about what these fucking journalists are doing. You put all these motherfucking journalists, including myself, I might add, my fans, you put these journalists on a fucking pedestal. You put the Brian Crescentes on a pedestal. The fucking Mitchie D's on a pedestal. The hip-hop gamers, you put us all on a pedestal, not just because you love us and you find us entertaining, but you need us to help you decide what games you should and should not get. How do we decide? What happens when we don't get a free copy of something and we have to pay for it? We have to use our brain and our own opinion. I am not in this industry anymore. I don't get free games. I go to Amazon.com. I decide what I want to buy, and I purchase it, and it's either I like it or I don't. When are you gamers out there going to learn to start doing that and stop putting the press on a fucking pedestal? Fuck the press. Fuck all of them. You don't need them. If they're going to write an interesting article or a feature piece on how a game's made, that's cool and all. But fuck the entire review system. Just fuck it all. Until the press as a whole removes review scores from their reviews and makes you actually read the review, then fuck them, fuck Metacritic, and fuck the publishers. I want you to think about something. New game comes out, and you go to a website, you don't read the review, you scroll to the bottom, you see that it got a 6. You don't buy the game. Let's say the 6 wasn't there. Oh, now you have to read the review. So you read the whole review, and you see a lot of positives in the review. Oh, graphics are really good. I like the control. But the game bored me. It was repetitive. So even though the gameplay was good, and the graphics were really good, at this point in time, I'm just sick of Call of Duty, so I was bored, so I gave it a 6. And you're thinking to yourself, well, I want good gameplay and graphics. That's what I like about Call of Duty, especially in multiplayer. I guess I'll get the game anyway. You know what I'm saying? You don't need a fucking score. A game is not just a fucking number. It's more than that. A creative work is not a fucking number. A movie's not a number. A comic book's not a number. A fucking game is not a number. There's too much work that go into these games. Story, characters, sound design, testing, gameplay. Ugh. There's so many things. Why the fuck do you care about these goddamn scores? When there's tons of things you could research out there. You could fucking call the company up to find out about the game. And if a company burns you, fuck it. Don't spend your money on that company until they start fixing shit. Let them know how you feel. Gamers Gate is here. So do something positive with it. My name is Torrance Davis, and I'm out. Peace.